hi guys welcome back to this african perspective thank you for stopping by okay we're going to be checking out videos about universal basic income and why some people feel like they should actually do that in the u.s and actually help with the bad economy and inflation that is happening it will really help a lot of household you know be able to kind of stand and you know survive pay for some of the things that they need their basic needs and you know it will assist a lot that's how um that's what some people's thoughts are and why they think it should be given while at the same time some feel like oh if that is done many people will not work well they will actually feel very lazy and feel like there's no need for them to actually put in any work and you know do something productive they would just rather just continue getting that money and not doing nothing at all but we're going to be checking out these videos and see what people actually have to say and what their thoughts are about this but before we get right into this video make sure you please click the like button it helps with the algorithm and i appreciate that so much let's get right into it controversial question for you is it a good idea for the government to just give people money talking about the idea of basic income giving a thousand dollars five hundred dollars a month no strings attached and this has been researched thoroughly over the last several years and the biggest pilot done by open research backed by open ai's founder sam altman now after hundreds of pilots across dozens of states thousands of participants several years the question is did it work and as the head of open research put it it's like asking does food work like, of course it works but it depends on whether you want a specific outcome cash recipients spent more to meet their basic needs and assist others and did not drop out of the workforce, although they did work slightly fewer hours. Often that gave them more time and flexibility for their family. But after three years of $1,000 a month, participants used the funds to buy essentials like food and rent and transportation, not vices. They reportedly cut down on taking unprescribed painkillers and drinking too much. And these positive trends weaken slightly at higher income levels, but this largely mirrors what people found with the stimulus checks and the expanded child tax credit that pulled millions of children out of poverty. People in need spent the money on necessities and those with less dire needs saved it or paid down debt. I mean, it seems obvious, right? These studies are still ongoing though, because the biggest things lawmakers want to know is whether people stop working. Well, not all lawmakers, some are just blocking the studies entirely based on their own assumptions, but either way, there are obvious nuances for a policy like this. And a bigger question is, who pays for it? Should it be a tax on the corporations not paying a living wage when one in five workers at the richest 1,000 companies don't earn enough to cover basic living expenses for a single adult? What do you think? Like People are always saying that the average American makes $45,000 a year. Where does the average American work? I want to make $45,000 a year. Are you kidding me? The most I have ever made is $30,000 in a year. Where where are these people working that they're making $45,000? Like, don't just tell me that they're making $45,000 a year. Where do they work? Is their job hiring? I need more details. Like, where are they getting these numbers from? I don't think I know anybody in my life who is making... $45,000 a year. Like, that is insane. I think that's, like, the average only because, like, there's literal billionaires who are making, like, so much in a year that, like, regular people, they're like, oh, the average is 45000 The average person, I would say, probably makes, like, 30000 Like, 30, 30, 35000 Like, you're not making $45,000 an hour on, like, a $15 an hour fast food salary. Like, where are the people who are making $45,000 uh, a year? Where are they working? Are they hiring? Tell me that, America! <laughs> so you're talking about a universal basic income, which I think people seem to think we're still in the 50s and 60s. Life's not even remotely livable. They could give us 2000 bucks a month. That's not going to dissuade any of the working class from working. It'll make things easier, and obviously protections need to be put in place so that that money's not immediately gouged, especially by the landlords that don't have to worry about rent control now. What it would do is give people that are at the very bottom of society, the bottom of the working class, the disabled community, veterans, the elderly, the ability to supplement their incredibly low pensions and to just have the basic dignity of shelter and food. 
Let, let's say we just go ahead and give every citizen, whether you're Jeff Bezos to the homeless person on the streets, $2,000 a month, 24000 a year. That's not even enough money for rent in most places in the country. But for those people that are homeless, who, by the way, can't get assistance because you need an address, well, maybe they won't have to live on the streets. Maybe they can get a roommate and go rent a room. Looking after people at the bottom isn't going to take anything from you. I got news for you. We get taxed enough already, and our country has the money for it. Right now, the money's going towards nepotistic bribes, but we could easily take care of people. It would also be a net positive, as studies have shown around the world, people will further education, thus generating more tax revenue. Don't be kicking down at the weakest people in society. Start kicking up. Don't criticize social spending. Criticize corporate welfare. Because all of us are living paycheck to paycheck these days, thanks to people like Galen Weston. Doing this, by the way, would reduce the social safety nets overall. And it probably wouldn't cost as much as you think. Maybe that mother that's being abused by their partner is able to leave. Kids that otherwise wouldn't have the means to go to post-secondary school can all of a sudden go. Maybe that person that needs to access mental health services but couldn't due to price restrictions can all of a sudden get the therapy that they need. Just saying, a universal basic income has been proven to work. And every pilot project that's been done across the world has yielded positive results. And we spend this money anyway. May as well cut out the bureaucracy. Because by the way, poverty has consequences to your health. I'd rather live in a country where we look after each other. But also, a country that's smart enough to realize that if we increase social spending, let people live happier and healthier lives, then they will be around to generate revenue much longer. Not having the stress about living paycheck to paycheck will reduce the amount of health complications people have in which they go to the hospital for. Oral health being directly linked to your overall health. May as well cover it. It's actually cheaper not to be a dick. Go. All right, so I wanted to ask everybody a question. Would you trade the stock market going down by half in order to get a 60K UBI per year per person and universal health care? I think I'd take that trade in a heartbeat. But I want to know about you. I want to know how you feel about that particular trade. Because I think the stock market would bounce back. But I think implementing that would initially be a hit. I'm all for it. I want to know what your thoughts are on it. There is no cash welfare in the United States since the Clinton era welfare reforms. All we have is TANF for single parents and South Carolina and Texas pay $300. In these dark orange states, the maximum TANF benefit keeps people at one-tenth or one-fifth of the federal poverty line. And then we wonder why poverty is intergenerational. The number one way to reduce future rates of addiction is to reduce adverse childhood experiences through poverty reduction. And remember the child tax credit that Congress let expire because conservatives were concerned that parents would spend it on alcohol and drugs. And study after study analyzing household spending proved that it was mostly spent on housing and food. We've seen the same results over and over when we give cash to poor people. In California, they gave randomly selected homeless people $750 a month, and they mostly spent it on food and housing. The crazy part is it got a bunch of them out of homelessness and into full-time jobs. Same thing in Stockton, where they gave people $500 a month. More of them ended up working full-time, probably because they could afford childcare. And in Denver, where they gave a whopping $1,000, that showed the strongest results for getting people off the streets and into jobs. The results of these studies were both counterintuitive and totally expected because we have a bunch of studies that say the same thing, but people would rather believe propaganda. With all due respect, every societal issue makes a case for universal basic income. In almost every single country around the world that has a UBI program, the overall quality of life is generally rated higher than the United States. And in the few states in the U.S. and towns and cities that have experimented with a UBI program, 
in almost every single case, it reduced hospitalizations, reduced illness rates, increased literacy and education rates, and increased economic growth. Because it turns out when people know that their survival is provided for by their government, they are able to take more time to actually make meaningful contributions to their society. The only reason we don't have UBI in the United States is because the healthcare companies successfully lobby the government to make sure that we don't. Because you can make a lot more money off of sick patients when they put off going to see a hospital until their illness is so severe it runs them a massive hospital bill. Universal basic income. Giving people money makes them a little less likely to work. That's what a recent study from Open Research found. What they did is they got a group of 1,000 low-income individuals and they gave them $1,000 a month. That's the treatment group. They're getting basic income. And then they got a control group of 2,000 people who got just $50 a month. That's their control group. After three years, they found that the employment rate in the treatment group was two percentage points less than in the control group. And they found that people in the treatment group worked about 1.3 hours less than people in the control group. Meaning you're getting more money, you're less likely to be employed, and you work less. Here we see household income for the control group in purple and the treatment group in red. At the start of the project, they're both making just over $30,000. But by the end of the project, the control group has a household income of $50,970 compared to the treatment group's $45,710. That means that the control group is making $5,260 more per year, not counting the basic income payments. With the basic income payments, with the additional $12,000 a year, that's this shaded region on the plot, then the treatment group would be getting more money, but they're still making less. They're still earning less than the control group. In the conclusion, the authors consider a debate between how welfare should benefit the poor. Should it be direct cash payments or some kind of non-cash benefit? And one concern with direct cash payments is that the direct cash payments will disincentivize the recipients from working. And I think this paper is showing us some evidence that that's a reasonable concern to have. I think the findings of this paper are pretty intuitive. Would you work for pay if you didn't need money? I wouldn't. I work for pay to get the money that I need to live how I want. If I already had that money, then I wouldn't bother working for pay. Of course, a thousand dollars a month is not enough money to have a comfortable lifestyle, but it's a fraction of enough money, it's part of that. So it makes sense to me intuitively that giving someone a fraction of the money they would need to not work results in them reducing their employment by some fraction, reducing their number of work hours, or being a little less likely to be employed. I don't think this paper is an argument against universal basic income necessarily. After all, if we discovered that denying the poor emergency medical services would make the poor work harder. Um, that's not really an argument to say we should deny the poor emergency medical services. Rather, it's just understanding the costs of providing some benefit to the poor. Meaning if we were to extend basic income payments to the poor, we should expect a little less employment or working hours from the poor. And it's important to keep in mind that it's not just a cost to the poor. That is, it's not just the case that they would be earning less money, but the money that they earn comes from providing a valuable good or service to someone else in society. So when the poor reduce their working hours, when the poor reduce their own income because of the basic income payments, that's also a reduction in the goods and services that they might otherwise be providing to society. Finally, I just want to note the contrast between this paper or this project and a recent publication from the Denver Basic Income Project. In this paper, the authors are extremely clear on their website, on their summary, in their abstract, on their social media about what they found and how they found it. And I think that's very refreshing, especially in contrast to the Denver Basic Income Project, which tried to 
obscure their results and presented their results on social media and on their website in a very misleading way. So I appreciate the findings and the clear way in which they were communicated by open research. Anyway, thanks for your time. I saw a comment that said, capitalism is fueled by the threat of homelessness. People who are vulnerable can be exploited for profit. Basic income gives people agency over their life, makes them far less vulnerable. Amazing for humans, bad for parasitic holders of capital. In America, capital has all the power. They don't want it, so we don't get it. That simple. The exact mechanisms they use to convince a large section of the population to act against their best interests of secondary concern. And if something doesn't benefit them, when you hear, when this topic is being talked about, about how everybody's like literally in financial shambles and that could help, you'll notice that a lot of um, some thoughts that just come behind it is, oh my God, like, why would they do that? Like, that's going to hurt this financially. There's like a lot of excuses and things like, oh, people are not going to work enough and this and that and that. But I do feel like there are just so many, like the a lot of money is being taken out like you can literally if you pay attention to the news you see a lot of money is being taken out and given to so many people outside of the country so many people somewhere else different people the money money keeps going to them so either way like if you do feel like oh some people have an issue like oh i don't want my tax money to be spent on this or to be given to this person whether you like it or not your money is already going somewhere and Maybe you just don't care. Maybe you, what your main concern is, is to who is getting your tax money. You don't really care if your tax money is being spent or being taken, used to do whatsoever. Maybe there are just some people that you just do not want to actually get your tax money. And it's like, I just don't get it. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me because either way, your money, the tax money that you keep claiming that once it's, it's uh, it tax money is not even yours. Like once it's taken away from you, it's not yours. So I don't even know why some people put Anyways guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching this video to the very end. I really appreciate you. Don't forget to click the like button. It helps with the algorithm and I appreciate that so much. And also subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you're watching me for the very first time. Hit the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. And don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about this video. I would love to see that. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.